Hello, I'm Alyssa Ford Morrell. I'm an extension master gardener with the Master Gardeners of Northern Virginia. We're in my front yard on a rather miserable winter day. What's a gardener to do? I've got a few ideas for you. So I've come in from the cold outside in order to take part in some of the first of the great activities for gardeners to do over winter, which is planning. A good garden needs a good plan. They don't just happen accidentally, or very, very rarely are they accidental. Instead, they take some thought, and because gardens change every year, this is something that you really need to rethink every year. What has happened in the garden during the past year? Are there any plants that have not done very well? Maybe you've even lost a plant. Don't feel too bad, it happens to everybody. Uh, but if you need to get rid of a plant, then you probably need to replace it. Uh, do you want to put the same kind of plant back in or are you looking to do something different with it? Um, maybe you've had a plant that's done too well and it grew too big and uh, it's grown into a pathway or you're having to dodge it. Um, and instead of pruning it back every year, you want to replace it, dig it out, put it somewhere else or give it away to a friend who has some room in their garden. Um, again, you know, if a plant's going to come out, what are you going to replace it with? Do you want to do some edibles in your garden? Do you have a good spot that gets a lot of sunshine since most edibles need a lot of sunshine? Um, tomatoes in general need about eight hours of sun a day in order to set a number of good tomatoes. Uh, if you're going to put in edibles, how are you going to prepare that soil? Are you going to add a raised bed? Are you going to dig the soil that's there? You need to do all that planning. And if you have the space, you need to think about how much will fit in there and which items are you going to prioritize in what is probably limited space. Few of us have so much space that it's absolutely unlimited. So those are all the kinds of things you need to think about uh, as you are planning in the winter. One great place to do some research about plants is the mgnv.org website. Under the Plants tab, you can access the Native Plants for the Mid-Atlantic Tried and True Selections fact sheets. These are wonderful collections of information about our local mid-Atlantic native plants, giving lots of details and information that will help you grow them successfully. Another wonderful resource is the Plant Nova Natives website, which has a whole book that you can download for free about native plants of Northern Virginia. Commercial vendors can be a great resource of information, particularly about the plants that they are selling. These are some of the catalogs that I have received this year, and they're awfully fun to go through. Sometimes I also go online and look at companies online because they often have more room to describe more plants and more details. I like to find vendors that are local if I can, and those that really spend some time to explain the plants and where they get their plants from. That makes them a good and responsible retailer. The Plant Nova Natives website under their Get Plants tab has a great deal of information about local vendors of plants. So the second activity that gardeners can do in the winter also happens to start with a P and that is planting. It's what we love to do anyway. We just have to do it inside in the winter. And of course, we're talking about specifically starting seeds. There's plenty of flowers and vegetables and herbs that will benefit from an early start inside so that they can be then transplanted outside as soon as the weather is warm enough. 
Usually you use something like this, but there's lots of alternatives. I know that there are people who save up their egg cartons to use as seed starting containers. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of details here because there's plenty of other videos that talk about the specifics of seed starting, but I wanted to make sure that you know that that's one thing to do. Your seed starting efforts will be greatly enhanced by obtaining a seed starting calendar for your area. Such a thing is available from the Master Gardener Help Desk or even by app. I've seen them available. But it helps you know when to plant your seeds indoors so that they're ready for transplant when it is warm enough outdoors. So the third activity for gardeners to engage in in winter is pruning. It's another P word. Pruning is one of my favorite things to do. I love my pruners. I use them all the time, but in particular in winter, because this is the right time to prune most shrubs, vines, and trees. The exception to the rule is a shrub, vine, or tree that primarily blooms in the spring. The reason you don't prune those is because if you do prune them in winter, you are going to be cutting off the buds that have already set and you will not be able to get the lovely blooms that is probably the reason you're growing that shrub, vine, or tree. For those plants, the ones that bloom in spring, the right time to prune is right after they bloom and no later than July 4. That's a little window before they set their new buds so that you know you can prune without upsetting the next year's blooms. But for the ones that you're going to prune this year, you need to choose a day that isn't so cold that you are shivering out there and head on out and work on the plants on a day uh, in winter so that they are less traumatized by the pruning. Their sap isn't flowing, they're really semi-dormant, so you can make the cuts that you need without disturbing them very much. It's to your advantage also because in the winter, any deciduous plant has dropped its leaves and you can see the structure much better and you can see the best places to make a cut, often very deep in that shrub or vine or tree. Uh, in order for it to respond well when it finally warms up and grow appropriately. I'm not going to take a long time to go into the details of how to prune because we've made a separate video about that with Paul Noon demonstrating winter pruning techniques. Another good thing to do in winter is to make sure that your pruning tools are all nice and sharp. Keep them clean and sharpened up. I tried and tried to come up with another P word to describe the final winter activity for gardeners, and I couldn't do it, but it is weeding. There are, unfortunately, winter weeds, plants that actually thrive and grow in winter, and at least some of them actually set their seeds very early in the year. So if you are not doing a bit of weeding in the winter, you are going to have some nasty weeds come full spring. Again, I'm not going to take a lot of time to describe the weeds that you need to look out for because we've made a separate video with Judy Funderburg, who is Weeder Par Excellence, uh, talking about winter weeds and how to identify them and what to do with them. So bundle up and take a good weeding tool out to get some weeds out of the ground. So we've identified a few important activities for you to undertake as a gardener during winter. But the last one is to enjoy the quiet time of winter and recharge your batteries and get excited about gardening again. We'll see you in the garden in spring.